This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk a little bit more about people who are building ship coins on Bitcoin. Here's the playbook, or at least how it used to work in crypto land. A small group of insiders, also VCs, venture capitalists, print up their own coins or tokens. This is what's called a pre-mine. This is often done outside of the US in an effort to avoid the SEC. So for example, Cardano did this in Japan, Ethereum did this in Switzerland, and then insiders use that money for marketing and to pump the hype machine. And then insiders dump into the hype and laugh at you. This is what we've talked about for years on this channel, all of the public, the initial token allocations for these blockchains, where you see the pink here or red, those are insider allocations that were then dumped on people. Even Vitalik Buterin has dumped 25% of his coins, quite unlike Satoshi. And this is something I talked about as well with Solana, how the Solana billionaires were laughing about how they're going to dump their bags on people. So I'll link to that in the description notes below. But what has happened in previous cycles in crypto land is rapidly coming to Bitcoin land, unfortunately, thanks to the folks at Bitcoin Magazine and related companies. We have Bob here. Uh, what an amazing name for a company. Bob stands for Build on Bitcoin, the first hybrid level two, layer two, connecting Bitcoin security with EVM liquidity. Bitcoin is actually quite secure. You don't need to connect it to anything else to make it secure. The much awaited season one of Bob Fusion is here combining liquidity from Bitcoin and Ethereum, deposit and lock assets to harvest BOB or Bob SPY. So if you lock up your Bitcoin, you might be able to get some spies. Hopefully the Dune people have looked at this. This looks like it's trying to uh, benefit from the, the publicity surrounding Dune. And also here, Bob is a first of its kind hybrid L2 powered by Bitcoin and Ethereum. This makes Bob the best place to build on Bitcoin. So this is strange how we somehow have to have Ethereum as part of this mix. Can't we just build directly on Bitcoin? But if we did that, there wouldn't be any token like Spice. Now this project is funded by a lot of the names you would expect from crypto. It's led by Castle Island Ventures and a number of other names, including Bankless and including UTXO Management, but really a who's who of crypto scammers. We have Nick Castle, whose playbook over the past five or so years was to sort of throw a bone to the Bitcoin maxis, all the while his VC fund was just investing in crypto companies. He got himself and his fund and a lot of uh, Bitcoiners unfortunately wrecked with his large investment in BlockFi. We have the bankless guys who sold a token to all their noob followers. That token is now down 98%. So these are people who benefit at the expense of others. And then of course we have UTXO management, which is the asset management arm of BTC Inc. BTC Inc. is the parent company for Bitcoin Magazine for all the Bitcoin conferences like Bitcoin 2024 in Nashville and also UTXO Management, as we mentioned, which is the investment arm. And this is going to become very important in a moment. But before I tie all of this together, I just ask you if you're wondering how you can help to support this channel, clicking that subscribe button, clicking the thumbs up for a like, leaving a comment and sharing this video would be extremely helpful. Corey Clipston, it looks like, is onto the same thing as well, talking to the founder at Bob. Hey, it looks like you guys are referring to your SPICE token as points rather than calling it a token. Question one, what are the pre-mine stats for SPICE and how much was given to the VCs investing in your seed round? This, again, would be essentially a pre-mine. Question two, when and how does SPICE go on sale to the public? If I have this wrong and you guarantee you'll never launch a token, please let me know and I'll delete this post. It's been over uh, approximately 24 hours and the post is still up. So I assume this is true. It looks like Corey has picked up on the fact as well that there are a number of crypto investors in this as well. And then if you go to their website, I clicked start investing SPICE and got geo-blocked. I assume that's because your lawyers believe the SPICE token would be considered a security in the USA. They claim that SPICE is just stats in a database that we use to keep track of user activity. But the website also promotes the launch of a future main net. I strongly suspect that may net not a Bitcoin layer two, obviously will have a token and that accumulated SPICE points will get you more tokens, hence the geo-blocking of USA residents since SPICE likely qualifies as a security offering. Needless to say, this is not building on Bitcoin. Until proven, proven otherwise, I strongly suspect that the uh, ship coins on Bitcoin VCs are pumping a ship coin Cardano style setup 
doing it overseas, no token at launch, but you buy receipts or points, whatever, and then get the tokens when mainnet launches. Whatever this thing is, it's definitely not a Bitcoin layer two. And when I tried to go to gobob.xyz, I also got geo-blocked. So then we have David Bailey, who's the owner of BTC Inc., which controls UTXO management, Bitcoin magazine, Bitcoin conferences, etc., saying, I'm not going to apologize for building a company or being a capitalist. I'm not going to apologize for being a Bitcoin maximalist. I'm not going to apologize for any of these things, as well as this tweet. The reason I'm so confident Bitcoin Magazine will continue to flourish is because we don't prescribe any editorial position to our org. Just be smart, sincere, and mission aligned with hyper Bitcoinization. The problem with this, though, is that Bitcoin Magazine has not been neutral. They've been running ads like the sponsored story for this ship coin called Karma. This is a paid, a pay to play, basically ad for karma. We also have quote unquote opinion pieces like this by, for example, at OnChain Monkey and at MetaGood NFT, a David Bailey UTXO management investment. And he mentions this project 70 times in the article. So unfortunately, there are a lot of different, there's a lot of overlap here and you have one arm of BTC Inc. pumping the other. David has been quite fond of using the Bitcoin magazine name to promote a ship coinery, and now he is trying to scrub it all as I begin to shine light on this. So for example, we have UTXO management, as we said, his asset management arm, and we have this listing from AngelList applied to the UTXO Bitcoin ecosystem fund. This is also investing in all these sort of tokens and stuff, and it's uh, being run by Tyler Evans, who is also a co-owner or co-founder of BTC Inc. Now, the weird thing about this is it's called the UTXO Bitcoin Ecosystem Fund. That looks fine and all, but just a couple days ago, it was called the Bitcoin Magazine Ecosystem Fund, obviously trying to piggyback off Bitcoin Magazine's uh, logo and pop popularity and brand in order to promote this fund on AngelList and elsewhere. In addition, you have announcements like this where it's Bitcoin Magazine launching Rare BTC, a white glove service for stupid people. I mean, collectors and high net worth investors looking for the rare sats and inscriptions on the market. And this business will allow you to buy a Bitcoin uh, logo uh, JPEG for 12 Bitcoin. This is obviously a very, very unethical business. And I would say that doing unethical things with Bitcoin or on top of Bitcoin doesn't shower you with magical Bitcoin pixie dust that absolves you of your bad behavior. Quote, I'm a Bitcoin maxi, buy my ship coin or JPEG. This is very unethical behavior in my opinion. There's a common misunderstanding that because Satoshi did something that everyone should be able to do it or that it's a good idea that everyone does this. So for example, this whole discussion of inscriptions, I had this exchange with Economics Analyzed. So writing messages on the blockchain, that's abuse. How about a message like Chancellor on the brink of a second bailout, which was the message that Satoshi put in the Genesis block. I believe he put it in the Coinbase, so it wasn't even an inscription, uh, but this wasn't, strictly speaking, a monetary use of the Bitcoin network. Economics Analyze says it's a slippery slope. Let them spend their sats as they wish. And then my response to him was, did Satoshi then try to sell this inscription or this uh, message on the blockchain to noobs as an inscription? Genesis block is quite unique in its history and is mostly there as evidence of no pre-mine. So there's this dated newspaper article that Satoshi cited on January 3rd to prove that that really was the first block and could not have been completed before that. And then I mentioned that these details matter. Economics Analyze responds, but what if Bitcoin Magazine's tokens are really enjoyed by these noobs and really make their lives better? If we trust the market, then we have to admit that these noobs find value in them and want to spend their money on them. Who are we to condemn Bitcoin Magazine for facilitating it? My response, 99.99% .99 of these tokens are going to trend to zero. You and I and Bitcoin Mag all know that noobs do not. This is the difference and this is what makes it unethical. Now, why does any of this matter? I think it matters because if you are a flagship media and investment property in Bitcoin, I think you need to be held to a higher standard. You need to be squeaky clean. You shouldn't be able to get away by just saying, quote, we don't prescribe any editorial policy for our mag because the conflicts of interest, as I hope I've demonstrated in this video, are unbelievable. Francis had a good suggestion to David Bailey back after Bitcoin 2022 when he got upset by the rare Pepe NFTs in the art gallery. This is the policy that Francis is suggesting for Bitcoin Magazine 
and related companies, and I agree with this policy. NFTs are ship coins. Ship coins on Bitcoin are still ship coin. I then apply the same policy as ship coins. It's very simple. So there's a, really a lot of smoke and mirrors here when David is saying, I'm not going to apologize for being a Bitcoin maximalist, because that's not really what he is. If many of his other businesses are about dumping tokens and JPEGs on noobs who are distracted by the Bitcoin magazine banner. You can run an article like this and a cover for Bitcoin magazine where you have a neutral discussion of spam and inscriptions. And it's kind of a clever cover. We have Mike Germano, president of Bitcoin magazine, saying, to be clear, we have always, com we have always been committed at Bitcoin magazine to publishing content from all perspectives on ordinals inscriptions, fostering open debate and discussion. Despite online influencers attempting to harass our employees, that's certainly nothing that I've ever done. Push for terminations, I've never done that, so it's probably not directed at me. And advocate for censorship of our reporting, we remain steadfast in our dedication to free discourse. But this is how it really works. You have Bitcoin Inc, BTC Inc at the top. The Bitcoin mag and conferences pieces of the business provide legitimacy to JPEGs and tokens and ship coins on Bitcoin by quote unquote fostering an open debate and discussion while the other arm of David, David Bailey's empire invests in these scammy projects, selling rare sats, NFTs, while helping to build the infrastructure for new scams through projects like Bob invested in through UTXO management, which is, as we've said, the investment arm of BTC Inc. I would say that this is a very, very stinky cheese indeed. Max Kaiser says in this tweet, and I agree with him, the New York Times doesn't stink in a pleasant way. It's dangerously irresponsible and should be shuttered immediately. Some stinky cheeses taste lovely to some people and it poses no threat to anyone. So the New York Times doesn't stink, uh, does stink, he says. But then he goes on to refer to Bitcoin Magazine as a stinky cheese that rises to the level of greatness. You might think Bitcoin Magazine stinks, and maybe it does. But in this particular and unique instance, stink tastes fine. I would disagree with that. And I, res I responded to one of his old tweets in which he said, if even one ship coin gets through, the reputational damage and loss of confidence to El Salvador will damage President Bukele's economic freedom agenda. And I responded to Max saying, do you apply the same standard to Bitcoin Magazine when they run a sponsored post post for a ship coin? This Because this is a very stinky piece of cheese indeed. They got through their editorial policy. So I would encourage Max to reconsider and be consistent. He's been uh, a hero of mine, and uh, it's very disappointing to see him turning a blind eye as well to what's going on at Bitcoin Magazine. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video, and let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.